Uh, let's. Uh, we got Tony Masashu on though. Awesome. So let's go to Tony. Tony Masashu, how you doing, Russian gentlemen? Gentlemen, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we sir. can. Buongiorno. Look oh, at this. Geez. Isn't this nice? I am at the Tuscan Vine, which is located at 500 West Aurora Road in Sagamore. It is an upscale Italian restaurant. Seth, this used to be the old Loose Moose. I don't know if you're familiar with this. It was in Sagamore on 82 okay. in, the ni- in the 90s, and they were here for about 10 years. They closed, opened up again as the Loose Moose. Then they were a Mexican restaurant. Then it was the Black Rose for about five minutes. <laughs> then it turned into the Loose Moose again. They found the Loose Moose, <laughs> and now it's the Tuscan Vine. <laughs> which is a brand new upscale, as I said, Italian restaurant. They remodeled this entire place. You can actually see the bar now. And you can see Daniela, the beautiful bartender. Isn't she? Hello. Famous? Yes, she is. Hi. <laughs> so, again, this is fine Italian dining. Excellent. So, Tony, how long have they been open? They've only been open for one week. Oh, wow. Um, so it took them um, about, it's a great question, Chris. It took them about a year and some months to get open because they did it the right way. They actually took this place apart and it was an old dark bar. They okay. also got like, like an Italian pasta machine. It's an authentic Italian pasta machine that they're making it pasta. Okay. They, they make their own tiramisu. So everything is made from scratch in the kitchen. So they have, this is kind of cool. They have a mascarpone, Italian butter, shallots, basil oil, vegetable stock with a carpone cheese over a veal and beef meatball. Doesn't that sound wonderful? That sounds amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Tony's like ready to put down the phone and start eating now. (laughs) So am I. (laughs) Now you know why I love this job. (laughs) It doesn't get get better than that. (laughs) So, Tony, is this place, uh, is it just dinner or do they do lunch or or what all do they do? They do, do they actually, they're doing dinner now. They're going to try lunch. They're open from four o'clock until nine every evening um and the nice part about it is obviously after nine o'clock they have a little drinking crowd because there's really nothing out here in sagamore when this was the loose moose this place really did well obviously well before the pandemic but again you know it's not really um it's inside right by the mark shopping center here inside the shopping center and there's really nothing here except down the street which is brexville and then the other way chris you're looking at you know, Waking Lizard and places in Macedonia, which right. are chain restaurants. Right. So, and that's the beauty of this, where I always talk about these local independent restaurants that, you know, need their help. Sure. Now, is this place a walk-in place, or do you need a reservation, or what do you no, have to do to you, come in? Actually, you can do both. You can make reservations Friday and Saturday evenings, um, and again, you can walk in. So, they're just opening up, and again, they got to get a little of the bugs taken care of here. Um, but once they get this place going, as I said, it's needed on this street. The basement is also right next door, which is okay. one of those, you know, big drinking Sports establishments. Bar. Yeah. So, um, and it's interesting. We're going to talked about this last week. There are going to be more new restaurants opening up this year than ever before. And I say that because I'm on the other side of the coin in this industry, owning my margarita business. And I've seen them come and go in the last 25 years where, like I had said, this was the Loose Moose, it closed, it was the Loose Moose, and you see a ton of name changes. And what's happened is now they've just revamped these restaurants, not having as much volume of people, but they're doing the business. So, Well, I mean, COVID had to kill a lot of restaurants. Oh, my God. Seth, it, it closed 100 Hundred thousand restaurants across the nation. I mean, two million chefs, people. 
Two million people lost their jobs through, during COVID. It's Two crazy. million servers, bartenders, and owners lost the industry. Because there were chefs that were big name chefs that lost their restaurants. Yes. So even the, the small guys had to get crushed by it. Yeah. So, so and again, I mean, those who had the money were able to stay afloat. And of course, you know, they got the government money, but it still didn't do justice of, you know, being closed for four straight months. Right. You know, completely closing your doors. And again, they were the first ones to close. You know, yeah. Governor, you know, the day before St. Patrick's Day says, I'm closing a bar and restaurant. And I got five and I got five pallets of margarita mix in my warehouse dated. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez, that's crazy. Why do you think it's why do you think it's getting popular again? It just seems like a weird time with the food costs and everything being so expensive. Well, you know what? That's a great question. And the answer to that question is people want to go out. I mean, okay. this is the means of entertainment is restaurants now. It's the movies. And look at um, the rest. I, I, the movie theater just closed in Seoul, and I heard about that this morning. And it was there for like 20-some years. I think it was Regal. Okay. So, again, and the reason why, now you can watch a movie at home. You know, now you mm -hmm. have Netflix. You have everything. So yeah. what are you doing? You're getting food delivered to your house, and you're going to restaurants right now, and, you know, you're eating inside. And there's so many different restaurants, you know, from Chinese to pizza to Italian. And a great example is, and, you know, you said that the food costs have gone up. I was talking to the guys, the restaurant owners in Little Italy. They are packed on Friday and Saturday nights. People are just, and people have never been to that part of town, are now exploring and going to restaurants. Sure. But you're right, though. I mean, food cost is a big deal. I mean, eggs and, like, I go to even the grocery store to try to get a hamburger, and hamburger meat is, is so up anyway. All the prices are up. It's crazy. It's going to be insane to run a restaurant. Yeah. No, and I agree. And you got to feel for them. And, you know, again, and then what that means is obviously their profit margins are less. So. Tony, I, I've seen... And I, and I don't eat a lot of fast food anymore, but you know, I still get it you know, every now and then for my daughter and stuff like that. But we go to a restaurant, you know, like a drive, just go into the drive through at McDonald's or whatever it is, Burger King, whatever. And the prices for a meal, just for a burger and fries, is now $15 in some places. And we're talking about a fast food joint. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy kind of money for that kind of food. No, I agree. And you know what? And you got to look at wages, too. You have to increase the wage. You have to increase the cost. And then again, you have, guess what? Then let's put something else in the factor of it. Overhead. You know, you got utilities. You got rent. Um, you got taxes. The yeah. list goes on. It's tough. Profit, you know, it's thin margins, obviously, only in restaurants. So sure. we're, we're going to talk about another restaurant that's opening up down the street in North Royalton. And I kind of touched upon this it's called fire 45 it was the old mario's this okay. they bought the old building and then they again they're rebuilding it it took them two years to build this and they're wow. still not done they should be open shortly i was joking i said i think the carpenters went in put one nail in the wall ate lunch and then went home <laughs> I was gonna say I drive that by that place all the time. Um, you know, my daughter now goes to like Royalton schools and stuff, and I drive by there all the time. And that place has been being built forever. It seems like, yeah. And yeah. I've and seen so many places in and out of there. I know Charles Guile, a friend of ours, friend of Triv's, yes, used to play up there all the time when it was Mario's or whatever. And this place, I mean, it looks like it's gonna be nice. It's but, beautiful. Yeah, it's taking forever to be built. That that seems to be a growing trend too, because like here in Twinsburg, there's a place that just opened up called Tulum. It's like a Mexican oh, restaurant. I think it's, it's Tulum. Yeah, Tulum. It's, yeah, it's a Mexican restaurant right on, off the highway there, across yeah. from uh, Cracker Barrel there. Yeah, yeah, but they across were from the hotel. Yeah. They were building that before the pandemic started, yes. and they just opened literally in the last month. You got interest. You got to walk in there. All the stuff they have. They have a fountain that's actually from Mexico. They oh, have wow. all the tile that's imported from Mexico. They're one of my frozen margarita customers. So okay. those who are listening, make sure you go in there and have a strawberry margarita, a pina colada, <laughs> and a margarita. Because I'm still paying tuition on Ohio State. Thank you. <laughs> I'll go and have two for you tomorrow, Tony. How's that? <laughs> and, you know, do, do me another favor. Put your hands on the windows because they're also a window cleaning customer. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey guys, 
So let me leave you with this. What is the slogan for Hennessy? Is it never stop, never settle, or helping making babies since 1908? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Let me give myself a plug. You can tune me in every Saturday morning on 1490 WERE with Ed Flash Ferentz, the obviously the veteran broadcaster that we all know for over 50 years in Cleveland from WMMS. Right. So you can hear us live. And again, I review restaurants between that hour. We do two segments between 10 o'clock and 11. And this is what I do. We 